Oh, okay. Date your biases. I cannot scream loudly enough. Oh, my computer works fine. Why should I ever do that? Well, here's why. Intel Dampol. Server floor in billions of CPU leaks passwords and much more. There is a serious security flaw in billions of Intel CPUs that can let attackers steal confidential data like passwords and encryption keys. Firmware updates can fix it, but at a potential significant performance loss. Reminds me of Spectre and Meltdown all over again. I know. And they will eventually fix this in hardware in the next gen chips. They will. This was just released August 12th, so... This is brand new. Just just a couple of... Uh, a week or so ago. Um, what do you want me to read? Intel's downfall was closely followed by AMD's inception, a newly found security hole affecting all Ryzen and Epic processors. The first independent testing of the mitigation microcode patches show that it can drastically lower performance in certain workloads. We've included details throughout this post. So... Let's see. Uh, this vulnerability identified as CVE 2020-240-9082 enables a user to access and steal data from other users who share the same computer. For instance, a malicious app obtained from an app store could use the downfall attack to steal sensitive information like passwords, encryption keys, and private data, such as banking details, personal emails, and messages simply. Oh, similarly, in cloud computing environments, a malicious customer could exploit the downfall vulnerability to steal data and credentials from other customers who share the same cloud computer. So update your BIOS is what you're saying. And here is the risk in cloud computing. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. And here is the risk in cloud computing. Websites are the cloud. A lot of websites share servers. Now, if you're shopping at you know, Amazon or Walmart, they have dedicated servers. They have massive infrastructure. Hopefully they get updated. But smaller websites, a lot of times they're shared on virtual servers where they co-locate or they share server space. If shopping site A is located on the same server array as some other website, That's not good. this means that a nefarious person could create a website and co-host it on shared servers that have shopping websites that have sensitive information and can steal it in the same server because they're sharing resources. I don't like that. No, and what it means is that the cloud companies will have to make sure all their stuff is updated. Yep, they will. And we kind of live in an area, in, in an era Error. where everybody has to pay more attention to security. I do. And you need to pay attention to your information. Yep. Uh, credit and financials work differently in different countries. They do. To our United States users, I strongly advise you to all have a credit card that provides free credit monitoring. We have like four cards that do this. Yep. Anytime there's an inquiry on our credit accounts or anything that happens with us financially, I get like four emails. Yeah, we get, yeah, it's fine. We, we don't Wells mind. Fargo does this, Discover does this, City does this. Um, you can open a card with Discover or Wells or any of those. It doesn't matter whether you even use it all that much, although I mean, some of them have some really good benefits, but they provide free credit monitoring and give you an instant alert if anything happens. Somebody opens an account, runs an inquiry, does anything else, and so you can immediately head those off at the pass. We have been the victims of identity theft before. I had somebody attempt to open a Macy's, Macy's account yeah. six months ago. Yeah, probably that. I got a uh, email alert, alert saying hey. new inquiry. And, you're like, and I clicked on it. Well. I clicked on the alert on the website and it said Macy's. And I'm like, I didn't do that. I haven't been in a Macy's ever. <laughs> I mean, okay, I've walked through a Macy's once or twice. I don't think I have ever bought a thing in Macy's uh -huh. in my life. Nope. So what you do in that case is you independently, you go search Macy's customer service. And get the telephone number. And I called them and I said, I just received an alert that a new account was opened in my name. I don't do business with you. And the lady goes, give, you know, now 
The lady on the phone has to ask you for your social security number because she has no way to look you up otherwise. Correct. But you found her number directly through Macy's. You called her. That's not a scam. You have to, you have to give yeah. her. So I gave her the information. She looked at Yes. Uh, we opened a card such and such a few days ago. Um, you're such and such and read off my name, my address, everything. I said, yeah, but I didn't do that. No. I, have been in, I haven't been in a Macy's in 10 years. Yep. That's fraud. Mm -hmm. And she goes, thank you very much for telling me. I will flag the account as fraud. It will be closed immediately and you'll receive notification in the mail. Mm -hmm. About a week later, I got a mail saying, thank you for contacting our fraud department. We apologize for the difficulty. This account has been closed and we have removed the inquiry from your credit report. Yep. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. Because I was on it like that. Yeah, because we get the alerts. If you don't get alerts, you should. So yeah, that happened to me with PayPal credit. You have a new PayPal credit account. I'm like, mm, no, you don't. No, I don't. We've, um, we've unfortunately, once your information is out on the dark web, it's out and it's going to get used over and over and over. And it's just very frustrating. So is. this is a big deal. Um, update your biases. I would say once a year. Well, whenever... I would just make it a habit. I would just plan on updating your BIOSes. You know, you don't necessarily need every single BIOS update, but... I, the important ones, like this one. This is also why I object to people who say, well, my needs are modest. I'll just use a computer for 10 years. You can't. They don't get updated anymore. They don't fix them. Correct. The problem is... When's the last BIOS update the i5-6400 received? When's the last firmware fix it received? Mm -hmm. Even if Intel releases a code patch, if your motherboard manufacturer doesn't make one, it doesn't matter. Nope. So can you use that offline? Can you just play a few games with it? Sure. Don't do online banking. Don't do email. Don't do anything important with it. Correct. Don't log into your accounts. Don't have your passwords on it. Correct. Which means... For security reasons alone, you have to upgrade your computer every five years at a minimum. You you really it is it is you're asking for it if you use a ten year old machine. And I know some people are going to be like, but why should I have to spend money because the devices aren't secure? You don't have to, but it's going to cost you a lot more if your information gets out there. Yeah. All right. Nothing else to say about that. Just keep in mind that all the articles are linked below. So click on them and take a read. So this is what's affected. Both consumer and server processors from Intel show the gap. For consumers, all PCs or laptops with Intel core processors of the sixth Sky Lake generation up, two and including the 11th gen Tiger Lake chips contain the vulnerability. This means that the <clears throat> vulnerability has existed since at least 2015 when Sky Lake was released. Holy crap. Notice this. Intel's newer 12th gen and 13th gen core processors are not affected. Well, that's good. What did I say? Uh, the downfall vulnerability now discovered is reminiscent of the legendary Meltdown Inspector vulnerabilities from 2018. Yep. The minute you do anything sensitive on your machine. Yeah. It matters. It, it does. So... I... Yeah. So, looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend 100 to 200 dollars for it. Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, Paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. 
Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well.